Okay, so we made it back to the camp and uh, picked up the Minn Kota 55 pound thrust C250, I guess it is, Endura 50 trolley motor that I left up here. I wish I had had it at home so I can do the work. However, here we are. First, I'm going to try the bilge pump Shade. thrusters and uh, see what kind of propulsion I get out of that. And I know that this Minn Kota will push this machine with the tracks on it. So, hey, buddy. Did you go for a swim already? He did. So we've been up here for an hour or so. Did a drone shot. We got lots of great video of the camp. And uh, got the battery that I leave up here, and that's fully charged. So that's ready to go. And even backup oars. And, of course, safety first, we've got our inflatable life jackets. Okay, so... I'm going to go drop this thing in the water and uh, drive out on the rock and let's see what uh, yeah, what happens here. Watch. Like you said, sink or swim. So that's working a little bit better with the, uh, with the trolling motor rather than the boosters or the thrusters. Thrusters are garbage. Once I set this up with the... Uh, actuators I'll have steering control and be able to lift it because that's the big problem is coming out of the lake. So we'll try that now. Look at that power, holy cow, tons of power. I'm gonna try to beach it. You might have you might have to come down here and uh you might have to come down here and uh I don't know man. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose the skag on this thing. Well that concludes that field test. I'm glad we had the opportunity. I think if we're cruising down the lake, which isn't much of a lake, it's a pond. I think that's all we need is we need to have that control and we need to be able to bring this thing up out of the water. I'm gonna try to land it up on the rock. That's it. Let's try something here. Let's try something. This is what I don't like to do. Okay, welcome back everybody. We're back in the hangar after completing our field test on the capabilities of the trolling motor versus the 3,500 gallon per hour bilge pumps to propel this Argo through the water. And what we've learned is bilge pumps just don't cut it. Not enough uh, thrust to propel the machine, so they get kicked to the curb. Great idea, look great on paper, but this is the end result. So speaking about paper, here's the backstory and how we got here. Um, well, what was the problem? Problem was that trolling motor has to be lifted out of the water before you drive out in the Argo. If not, you run the risk of ripping that skag off, ripping that transducer off, and uh, seriously damaging the prop, which I've already had to replace that prop a couple of times uh, because of that. So I needed to come up with a solution to easily get this trolling motor at least above, uh, above the water level when I'm coming out so that I don't ruin it. But problem is it's actually backbreaking to lift that thing up and tilt it over especially like for my wife it's it's not a it's not a simple task so i thought we got to simplify this so it started on paper with great uh, great intentions drew up my diagram here wiring diagram how i was going to do this how i was going to design it uh bought a bunch of parts i thought i would need from amazon and princess auto and other places spent about 437 bucks on it at the end of the day only needed one actuator the reverse polarity switch and uh, the garmin extension which i'll explain so it wasn't 249 about 180 bucks. Uh, the bonus was I already had a Minn Kota battery box, so that saved me about 75 bucks. And the benefit with using that uh, battery box is simply because it has a 60 amp circuit breaker built in it already for the motor, and it has two 10, I think it's 10 amp um, breakers uh, for the 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter uh, adapters. 
Uh, you'll also need a deep cycle battery, obviously, but if you have a trolling motor, you already have uh, one of those. So I ordered all this stuff, Anderson connectors, polarity switches, PWMs I was going to go with, um, an extra fuse block. So I had great intentions of just hardwiring this thing, extra motors for uh, turning from uh, Princess Auto, and of course there's one of the linear actuators um, that I purchased uh, there also. Uh, oh, let's get rid of this. Actually, I did purchase this, but uh, this is from Quails Brewery up in Aurelia, just outside of Wardminster. I'll give these guys a shout out because uh, went up there for lunch, uh, what, a few weeks ago on the motorbike with a buddy and uh, had lunch and decided, hey, you know what? Bought a bunch of these uh, mine boots, a couple of cases. And to be honest, uh, actually, I've been in Germany about three times in the last month operating flights over there. And uh, this beer was as good as any German beer I had. So there's a shout out for these guys. If you're in the area, put them on your radar. So anyway, like I said, lots of extra parts, but uh, let's go back to what we ended up going with. So uh, there's the finished product. What this allows me to do is, uh, is lift using the reverse polarity switch. I incorporated a trampoline spring on the bottom just so there's less torque on that actuator when turning. Offer, also offers a little bit of bouncy bouncy in case it gets a little bit rough but it's just going to be enough to get me out of the water, which is perfect. These actuators, obviously, are not uh, waterproof, and uh, so I'm hoping the 8-inch is going to keep me uh, above the water line, and we'll see how that works. I had to go with the big box, only because of this transducer wire. It is quite long. It's actually originally designed to fit to the front of the, the craft, in this case the Argo, to the uh, Garmin uh, fish finder. And, uh, boy, I watched a guy splice this wire on YouTube and uh, that is not a job for me that would have been an epic failure um, so it was just easier for me to buy the extension off of Amazon for about 60 bucks or so which I will hardwire to the Garmin run the wire back here and when I need to use it or want to use it I just I just plug it in so that's why the box is so big there's about I don't know 10 12 feet of cable that's all wrapped up in there from that transducer um, used rubber grom grommets so the box itself says it's waterproof um, it's not going to be once I punch holes in it but I will say it is going to be at least a little bit weatherproof if you will and uh, so that's why the box is so big and I just bolted that down to the to the existing uh, motor mount um, like I said talked about that spring offers a little bit of bouncy bouncy with the clips if this thing fails and doesn't work I've got uh, quick disconnect I can just disconnect it lift the motor up anyway, and uh, away we go. So here's the Minn Kota box. I've got it on the ground right now because I was charging it. Uh, that will just sit in the back of the Argo, and you can see with the quick connects, where we're just running the power uh, to the box. There's that 12-volt uh, accessory I talked about. So I just soldered on a, uh, on a connector there, and that plugs in to operate it. And uh, so the, really the system is plug and play. Um, and can't wait to get it out in the water and actually uh, actually try it out. The motor probably won't ride on the back of the Argo while I'm hitting the trails. If you've seen some of my Argo videos, you'll know how rough the trails are, and uh, I'll just keep this in the back of the, the Argo. So there you have it. Um, lots of extra parts. I'll end up using them because uh, I'm going to do this uh, John Deere uh, tractor here. And uh, I did a video probably, you may have, if you want to check it out, John Deere 100 series snowblower lift solution. Kind of the same thing. Wife actually does a lot of the snow blowing here when I'm away at work, gone for three or four days overseas flying. So uh, that made it really easy for her. And I'll be using these linear actuators and this uh, four position joystick uh, so that she can uh, manipulate the uh, chute on the snowblower uh, horizontally and vertically without uh, having to get off the machine. So there you go. There's the solution for that problem. And can't wait to get out and try it out. So, uh, hey, leave your comments or uh, ideas or whatever. And uh, happy Argoing.